Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Rest From Off The Cuff. Today we'll be premiering, finally, <laughs> after all of the teasers that I posted um, in my, uh, you know, from Instagram to Facebook to just the community uh, tab in, um, for the channel. I've been really excited to present this to you guys. This is, of course, the brand new Trident Pro 600 Mark III. So this is officially the third iteration of an extremely popular and influential watch in the micro brand kind of diver world. And it's even kind of affected, um, you know, just affordable automatic divers in general, um, even for mainstream brands. Now a little bit about the brand. Christopher Ward is of course out of the United Kingdom, uh, based out of London. And uh, they're essentially a micro brand because they still sell direct and whatnot, but they have quite a few lines. <laughs> um, so I pretty much would think of them even more as kind of ascended above a micro brand and really being on that kind of boutique level just because of the depth of their ranges and the strength of their releases. Um, they're mass producing these watches in, in a pretty special way. And I don't mean mass producing like in, in any type of negative connotation, but they're selling a lot of watches and they're, and they're turning obviously that success into growing out their brand and their lines. Now, the C60 Trident has really been a staple of the brand and it, it's, it's so much of the design language of Christopher Ward kind of originates from the C60 Trident because it has been so popular. And this is really their first full departure from, you know, kind of its its original roots where it was a little bit of a mishmash of different elements from very popular watches um, that it kind of put together. And while other brands like, let's say, Steinhardt, who also, as far as the value proposition game, when was kind of its, its running mate, the C60 and the, uh, and the Steinhardt Ocean One really, um, you know, were, were like the Camaro and the Mustang. You know, this each uh, forums would battle it out and say which was better. Um, but at the end of the day, the Steinhardt stayed more on the homage side, while the Christopher Ward Trident uh, definitely tried to expand its its uh, its range and and really play with design and uh, do something new and bring something different. So. Um, with that said, let's go ahead and take a closer look. Okay, so this model is actually the 42 millimeter um, Trident Pro, and essentially this is this very standard dive watch. Now there's a couple of other releases that you guys are gonna see, and that you might have already seen teasers for, um, but this is essentially kind of uh, the cornerstone and the real base of the entire collection, and. Um, it offers quite a bit for being kind of the base model. Now, of course, um, the the stats did go across the screen there, but I measured these with my own personal caliper because the uh, the press release actually didn't have what the advertised specs are going to be. So they might differ slightly than what you're going to see on the website if you click there right now because, of course, I'll be publishing this after um, this watch is, is actually available online. So... It has a 42 millimeter diameter and a three, I'm sorry, a 13 and a half millimeter height, although it wears it extremely well because of this beautifully new contoured and fully beveled case. Now the lug to lug is actually much shorter at just um, over 49 millimeters as I got it right at 49.3. So this is gonna wear like an absolute dream. Even with this T-style, um, end link that does extend the case out a bit as you can see um, it actually once you see it on wrist you'll see that it just wraps so nicely so as far as the specs go that's going to be uh, kind of the, the case and of course this is marine grade stainless steel the crystal is sapphire with an inner AR coating the bezel is 120 clicks unidirectional Ooh. There's just a new level of smoothness, I feel like, that was added. Um, the previous iterations, I felt like, although there was much improved, um, you know, kind of as each uh, evolution came out in each release, um, it was more on the notchy side, which I'd say is more likened to something like an Oris Aquas, very notchy bezel, um, still great tactile feel, but this now is just... It's 
beautiful. Oh man. It's smooth, but at the same time quite notchy, and there's not like, you know, tons of play. It just, it's locked in. This thing, really, really impressive. Um, pretty much from any touch point or at any kind of point of motion on this timepiece. So it's, of course, 120 clicks. Um, and then uh, one of the really nice things is you still have that uh, full ceramic insert, but it's also now fully loomed, which is great. So it's not just going to be that triangle pip. It's going to be the entire face um, and loomed really, really well. And you guys are going to notice that when we get to the low light transition. Now, as far as the... Uh, the crown goes, it, you know, everything on this watch is new, guys. There's there's nothing that's that's carried over apart from, you know, the movement. Uh, but other than that, this thing is just brand spanking new in every way. Everything's been improved. This crown, uh, as you can see, it's signed. It, there's no sharp points. It doesn't dig in. Everything is just really nice, super smooth. Even the screw-in action has been improved, so the winding action is, is nicer, although it's the same movement. Um, just screwing the crown in and out is, is definitely a much nicer experience. Um, and the, the edges here are completely uh, finished and broken in, so you don't have anything sharp that's going to dig into your wrist or your hand, depending on which, uh, which arm you wear your watch on. Now, um, the movement, of course, is the Sleeta SW200 uh, movement. It's hacking and hand windable. has a 38-hour power reserve. You're not going to be able to see it because it doesn't have a see-through case back or anything like that. But we do have this beautifully stamped, and which has actually been a real hallmark uh, for the Trident line, is that really deep stamped case back. Just really nicely done, as you can see great uh and and actually it's it's funny the you can see the openings here that you used to unscrew and screw down uh the case back actually do mimic uh the seconds the uh active seconds counter on um the the previously released uh trident chronograph model so i thought that was a really nice touch um to, to kind of carry over the design language which is really really great now, uh, moving on to the dial, which is, of course, going to be a point of big, you know, contention and controversy. It still has the branding uh, there with a fully spelled out name. And uh, but now it does have kind of that ghosted twin flag logo, which has been the logo. Um, you know, I think a lot of people kind of confuse the brand name with the logo. Um, you know, it's Rolex's logo is a crown. It's not the word Rolex. Um, that's just not the brand name. So the logo, of course, is going to be the twin flags. And then the brand name is Christopher Ward. And uh, it's still fully spelled out. We'll get into kind of the history um, and kind of the comparisons with other models um, in a later video. But I'm just going to focus mostly on this watch kind of on its own merits and, and the Trident 3 from that standpoint. So um, just look forward to that and definitely comment in below um, if there's something you, you want to discuss in that next one. But... As far as this goes, of course the dial is now that beautiful, polished, deep, glossy black, which also matches this great bezel. So really nice, but also super legible. As you can see, even under the bright studio lights, it's still doing a great job. Obviously, if you're going to look at it straight on, it's going to be quite reflective, but it's doing a great job with managing the reflections um, in general. And you can see how legible that is. So now um, it's definitely much less cluttered when it doesn't have the kind of guilloche wave patterns. And I really think this is a step in the right direction, um, especially since, of course, that wave pattern was really more of a hallmark of the Seamaster. Same thing with the hands. They were really a hallmark of Bremont. Um, although Christopher Ward really popularized them kind of for mainstream um, buyers. But I, I love that. You know, they just now it just feels like its own watch. It's it's really a departure, and I'd say that kind of in a way the end game um, for the Trident, and and it's really kind of come full circle and has become really its own thing in in really every way. So, um, 
really great job on this piece. I've had it since February. Um, you know, because of the press embargo, I haven't been able to share my thoughts on it. I've only been able to post teasers um, within the last two weeks. So it's been really fun kind of sharing little bits and pieces with you guys, but I'm excited to kind of give you guys a little bit more deep kind of introspect on it. Now, of course, the indices are fully applied, but they're now much deeper, which helps with the loom. Um, and they do have that great beveled edge there, as you can see on the inner portions. Uh, also, we have the date still at three, but now it actually is has a black date disc, which I think really helps balance out the dial. Um, and of course, because now you have a white font on the dial, white uh, numeral for the date, uh, it just has a nice flow to it. And of course, it still has the great um, little painted frame around it, which I think this this thing just feels so balanced when I look at it. You know, of course, there's gonna be some detractors that are just gonna be obsessed with the words Christopher Ward on there. You know, either way, there's gonna be an empty space on your dial, right? It doesn't matter unless you wanna have like something in, and then it's just overly cluttered, you know? Um, really, uh, just briefly, you know, my opinion is, is um, the hallmark now of Christopher Ward is the open space by the 12 and you know although you still get the ghosted mark you know to kind of uh, appease the 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 mainstream um i think that's kind of the interesting thing and the cool thing about their look is that it's an open space right there kind of in that uh upper hemisphere of the dial you have that open space and everything is very minimalist and very sharp and stark and um just a uh, purposeful in design it's it's not a lot of ornamental things on the uh, on the dial which i can definitely appreciate because it's a tool watch at the end of the day you know uh, as a diver now uh the handset is of course polished and it does actually have if you look at the center line on the hands they're actually brushed which is really great for legibility especially when you're trying to set the time you don't have to worry about the high polish um, you know tip on there because it's not high polished it's going to be brushed so it's going to capture the light and hold on to it in a way that sometimes uh, fully polished hands um, can reflect and kind of give away that tip because it'll reflect off something in the uh, you know above you and then it's harder for you to set the exact time so I can definitely appreciate that as well and of course it's just an extra little detail uh, that, that really just kind of shows their skill level and, and what they're able to produce now, as far as the loom goes, it's of course Super Luminova, but now it is X1GL uh, C1, so it does glow green, but of course it is thicker applied now and also is applied into the uh, bezel insert. Um, so all around, it's just much better loom, and you guys are really gonna enjoy um, checking it out when we get to low light transition. The water resistance is still 60 ATM or 600 meters, which is definitely really ahead of its class in this price range and in kind of that um you know that's the base model there there are other models that will be give you a thousand meters uh limited edition cosc models uh, in the trident range the mark three range um but this one as a standard model is just completely packed to the gills uh with capability there uh the end links are solid everything of course is still quite solid but one of the nice things that they've added is a quick release, um, as you can see there, a quick release system as far as the bracelet goes, and they're very thick and robust. Um, I did post a little, you know, teaser video on my um, on my Instagram, kind of showing how they're used. I haven't really tried to do it with gloves on, um, but I figure I'll show you guys a little bit more of the bracelet before I do that um, and, and pop those off. One of the nice things, of course fully milled clasp now um so before it was although it was very svelte and very thin um it wasn't a milled clasp and now it is and man it's still super thin really excellently done i love the contouring here that it just ties in with the lines on this fully brushed bracelet and then you do have this great mechanism here so you can get your micro adjustments which is great so Essentially, you're, you know, you can adjust almost a full link of, you know, comfort depending on if your wrist swells, doesn't swell, whatever. This thing is going to give you um, the right fit. 
Of course, we still have the contoured folding clasp here, which is nice, it's very soft, broken edges, so you're not gonna worry about anything sharp. This thing fits super comfortably on the wrist. Um, so actually, you know, while we're here, let's see if on camera and with gloves on, I can actually remove this pretty easy. So as you can see here, it actually is just essentially, there's two posts on either side that the pins connect to, and bam. It's that simple. Um, so now you can actually do a toolless swap when you're gonna take this off, and let's kinda get a closer look here at the bracelet itself on this end. You can get an idea of this um, really cool mechanism there. And it's really nicely done and, and quite overbuilt. Um, of course, when you have something proprietary like this, it does worry some people as far as, hey, well, what happens if this thing fails? What can I do? But as you can see there, this thing is, you know, this isn't a standard, this isn't something you're gonna find in, in a cheap, um, you know, leather strap. This is definitely something that has been engineered and built um, and, and built to last, really, which is really great. Um, so with gloves, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, or how easy or hard it's gonna be able to be, especially reaching around the tripod to get this back on, but let's hope it goes well. Okay, now as you can see on the wrist, now that I have uh, everything secured back down, on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, this thing works just about perfectly. Now, although there is a 40 millimeter scale model, um, you know, essentially it's only gonna taper down to that same uh, size in the clasp here. Um, so for me, I really think that this is probably, as far as scale goes, my favorite, um, you know, and, and I really think it's a sweet spot because as you can see, there's a nice taper there from the 22 down to an 18 millimeter link and then to a 20 millimeter about clasp. Um, really beautifully done. You can see that brushing is absolutely fantastic. Those fine beveled edges there. The, the light catching on the case, just gorgeous. And then because of those um, contours underneath the case there, you definitely get that great range of motion. So it's gonna wear really, really nicely. So you can see it just drapes down the wrist. Just excellent. And uh, you know, easily you could slide a cuff right over that. Look at that profile, just fantastic. And I'm just absolutely loving uh, the links and this bracelet is just outstanding. Um, of course, you know, they don't carry on the case bevels down into the bracelet, but um, I think that the style and the way that this is definitely, um, you know, more on the tool diver side, um, I think it's a nice balance. And especially with the fact that you're still gonna get some nice finishing on this clasp and some great details there. I think it ties together really quite well um, and the nice thing is, of course, you do have that micro adjust there. So if I need to, you know, let things out a bit, I can put it back on, have a little bit more breathing space on the wrist, which is nice. Um, if I need to, I can tighten it up if it gets cold. So as you can see with my arm, you know, giving you a little bit better idea of kind of scale and how this would be on a human uh, versus just, you know, a really close up wristy where it might seem a little bit oversized. Um, you can see here that just the scale is absolutely perfect and you know let me know what you guys think in the comments below as far as um, you know your thoughts on the way that this tapers and and you know and what you think about uh, as far as the scale on you know I think a lot of people would say 40 is our sweet spot it's a sweet spot for me as well um, but I do love that this um, bracelet the way that it tapers and of course with a smaller lug width that taper is going to be a little bit less dramatic and that's uh, something uh, that I think uh, even at this a little bit larger size it, it wears it really really well and uh, it wears well on the wrist. So with that said let's go ahead and move on. Um, actually before we get into some light transition let's talk a little bit more about this bracelet so of course everything's solid it's actually connected with pin and collars um, which i think is a smart choice especially considering that these guys do a five-year warranty um the last thing you want to do is have somebody strip or cross thread 
um, a bunch of their screws, ruined links, whatnot. Um, yes, it is a bit harder for you to, I mean, I adjust and, and size all my own bracelets and pin and collar are a big pain in the butt. And, um, but you set it one time and it's like great forever um, versus, and these are, you know, pretty robust pin and collars. This isn't just some friction pin where you push it in direction, uh, one direction and out the other. Um, these are, are really nicely done and basically it takes a little bit extra time to set it, but it's super secure afterwards. And, you know, I can definitely appreciate that, especially with the profile on these links, um, have no problem whatsoever with the, with these not being screw pins. It's a bit of a gimmick, honestly. Um, there's a, believe me, there's tons of companies that have done really horrible screw pins, um, and bracelets, uh, of, of watches that have high spec. And you know, it's one of those things. It's not like Sapphire where Sapphire is always going to be Sapphire to do a screw pin. There's a certain way to do it. And there's a way to do it really well. Um, but from a support standpoint, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, pin and collar definitely still works just fine. Um, and then, of course, there is actually, I don't have it, but you'll see it, I'm sure, online. Um, there's actually also a hybrid strap option, which is a Cordura and rubber mix um, fitted, and I believe it's quick release also. Um, that is going to be a really cool killer option, and I believe that's how you get it at the lower price. The retail for this... Um, of course, it hasn't been published yet, but it's around uh, 695 euro to start. So I imagine that's going to be for the rubber strap option. I'm not sure if they're doing NATOs. Um, we'll just have to see what they list and, and kind of as they release and roll out more info on these. Um, so with that said, let's actually move on to the low light transition. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the lights. Now, as you can see, this is really great loom here. Um, very clean. The nice thing is that in the daylight, um, and of course, um, in artificial lights, it was still very, very white. Um, unlike C3, which does glow really brightly, but has uh, more of a green tint to it, even, um, you know, outdoors and whatnot and, and full lighting. So it's really nice to get that uh, X1 level uh, C1 because it, it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. It's going to give you a nice long lasting glow. Um, and at the same time, it, it of course is going to appear very, very white and very crisp uh, when you're looking at it within daylight. So now my hot studio likes to do a great job of kind of simulating direct sunlight. But what I like to do in these low light transition shots is really kind of give you an idea of what this timepiece is going to look like. Um, you know, when you're getting in and out of a vehicle, transitioning, you know, in and out of a building, and then also you can see the way the loom plays and the way the light plays. Of course, this is a glossy dial, so it's not going to have as much play as something like a sunray where you're going to get another idea. But what you can see is here is look at the way the light hits those, oh man, hits that brushing on those links. Look at that lower link down by the six o'clock. See how uniform that is? Extremely beautiful, tight brushing there. Then you come down over here, you look at that bevel. Look at the way that bevel lights up. Even with a little bit of fingerprints on it, you can see the high contrast definition in that transition, how sharply it's transitioning from brushed to polished. So those chamfers are absolutely gorgeous. And again, we're definitely going to do more videos um, of this, and we're going to really get into some of the kind of design features, also do some comparisons uh, within kind of the, the Trident line and, and compare and contrasting the evolution, as well as comparing and contrasting against some of its contemporaries that are also kind of in that same space. As you can see, the loom still very nice and quite legible. I'm loving the legibility on this piece. Um, you know, of course, black and steel isn't, you know, the most original dive watch color, but it is one of the best. Um, it's one of the first, uh, you know, Blanc Pawn, Rolex, um, you know, the Seamaster. There's just been, you know, those, those big divers. Um, that kind of helps start everything. Um, and it, it's, it's been a successful, um, you know, combination, but here this watch isn't emulating any of those watches. Um, it's really 
kind of standing on its own two feet, which I can really enjoy. I mean, there's other watches now I feel like that are starting to pay homage to this watch. Um, so yeah, I'm looking at you, Filippo uh, Loretti. <laughs> or, so, you know, I feel like the Trident line has really made a name for itself and the Christopher Ward brand has really done a great job of, uh, you know, connecting with, uh, with the market. And of course, there's some people that are going to be uh, upset, this and that. But I mean, if you really are a watch enthusiast, you're not too worried about the name that's, and if you're going to be buying a micro brand, you shouldn't be too worried about the name that's on the dial anyway. Um, and the name on this dial is a good one that has a great reputation. So it's a name you should be proud uh, to have on there. And I think the brand should be proud to display it. And, you know, they don't need to hide it and they don't need to pander to every single request somebody has when they feel like they have a formula they have something that works i think this works and i think people who are not watch fans because of the contemporary design that you see here um but it's still minimal en enough to be quite classic and i think this will design will last the test of time as far as their design language moving forward and this kind of being you know um the beginning of the end if you will you know and, and tying wow. back to the end game comment um you know, kind of closing out, uh, closing a curtain and closing a door, closing a chapter on every other trident that came before it. And then this is really kind of, I think, the pinnacle of, uh, of what they're doing. And I'm looking, every, anything from here is just going to be next level. I mean, the, whatever they're going to improve, um, whether they end up painting the, the twin flag logo to make it brighter and, you know, um, to appease some people or, or anything gets reworked or whatnot. I feel like what you have here is an amazing place to start. Um, so I'm really excited for that. You know, again, the Mark III's value proposition is really undeniable. Um, and now in kind of this third iteration, the Trident, again, you know, a nice feature is that it's really shed its last few borrowed design cues. Um, you combine that with that 60-60 guarantee, 60 days of free returns with a 60-month warranty or, or five years if you want to do the math. Uh, you know, you compare it to something like, uh, let's say, the Oris Aquis, which I would say is a real leader in the segment. And this is a lot more affordable and a lot more versatile. Um, you know, the Aquas has proprietary looks. And again, I love the Aquas. Check out my Instagram, check out my YouTube. I wear the Aquas, I love the Aquas, but let's face it, the proprietary looks, it's not great. Um, as far as size options now, it's actually on par um, with the size options you're gonna get. And I think Christopher Ford actually kind of offers better size options uh, considering the the case uh, shape and profile. Um, and then the pricing, of course, the retail, because again, buying directly from Christopher Ward, the pricing you're gonna get versus buying directly from Oris um, or even an, an AD, those are gonna retail for around 2,100 bucks. Um, you know, they're still gonna have 30 atmospheres of water resistance uh, versus uh, 60. And then if you want 50 atmospheres, you know, if you want a 500 meter Aquis, um, those variants cost a lot more money. So, um, and then you look at the clasp, of course it doesn't have a quick adjust clasp, at least not on the bracelet. Um, and then it has the same movement essentially with the custom rotor, which I would even argue that the Christopher Ward rotor is, you know, nicely, uh, I would say nicer decorated. It's not just painted. It actually has some special etching and, and, um, if it honestly is a more custom rotor than the one you're going to get in the, uh, in the Oris. Um, so, you know, you kind of add that up and I think you can see that this really offers a lot of bang per buck. Um, model variants go as far as sizing, you can get it in the 42, a 40, or a 38. Now the colorways and all that is going to be limited, um, based on particular colors. I believe the 40 is just going to be black on black, um, at least for now and, and kind of the first run. Um, and then uh, basically the sizes that carries on from the diver, which you see here, but also the GMT models. Um, the GMT is going to be starting around um, 895 euro. And then there's kind of a top of the line limited edition, which is the titanium COSC thousand meter diver, which is limited to 300 units, which is actually quite limited. Um, so that's pretty impressive. It's going to have helium escape valve and whatnot. And I'm sure you'll see tons of great videos on that. And the pricing for those is going to be around uh, 1,250 euro, which still isn't bad. Um, you know, you convert it and, and it's still under 2,000 bucks considering what you're getting. That's pretty remarkable. 
Now, when we talk comparable models, um, of course, we talked about the Oris Aquis, which I think is a real standout in the segment. But, you know, if we talk about mainstream competitors, you'd probably think something like the Tag Heuer Aqua Racer, uh, which is going to retail around $1,650, which anybody will tell you, even Tag fans will tell you not to pay retail on a Tag. Um, but if you so decided to compare them, I think the uh, Christopher Ward, you know, has it beat pretty much in, in every way. Uh, also, there's a Raymond Weil Freelancer Diver, which is a great watch I've reviewed on the channel. I think it offers tons of value, but those retail about uh, 1750. You can get them for less, of course, gray market. Um, and with the with the movements, pretty much all the same movements. Um, you're definitely, uh, you know, you can get a little bit of bang per buck from that. Um, but I think here you're going to see this, this is a lot more innovative um, with its design, uh, with its key features here that you're going to have and and uh, more complex finishing, which which I can definitely appreciate. Now, kind of from the independent side, when you're thinking micro brands, you know, you could compare something like the Monta Ocean King, but those are just under two grand and they're definitely worth every penny and they're outstanding watches um but you know i'd say in the way that the ocean king is about 95 percent of of you know of a tutor and i would say just monta in general right you're getting like 95 percent tutor for about half the price and tutor is about 95 percent rolex for half the price you know this is kind of like getting 95 percent of a monta for half the price um and just because Tudor exists doesn't mean that you don't want a Rolex. And just because this Christopher Ward exists doesn't mean that I don't want a, you know, that I don't want my uh, excellent uh, Monta Ocean King. And just because I have the Ocean King doesn't mean I don't want a Black Bay 58. So, you know, there's there's definitely levels to it. Um, but what Christopher Ward's doing is, is really cool and special. I uh, Just an honorable mention, another... A diver probably in this range would be something like the Turbi Lawless, um, which can be had for around fourteen hundred bucks. And depending on the variants, those are you know from what I can tell, really nice watches. I've, I haven't uh, reviewed one for the channel, but I think that's definitely one that's kind of up there and that's acceptably expensive. People kind of know you're getting what you pay for. Same thing with Monta. Um, people can accept the price due to the quality. Um, and those watches are a lot more expensive and they use a lot of the same tricks that you're going to see here. Um, and it, and they're not going to have some of the tricks that also you see used here on this uh, Mark III Trident. So, you know, the bottom line, this is still one of the best Swiss made boutique divers. And it really is a strong contender for just best overall diver right around a thousand bucks. I mean, it's really tough. Um, to argue that there's a better value that's out there, a watch that makes a stronger case for being that thousand dollar pinnacle. This is the realest, most legit dive watch you can get for a thousand bucks um, from a micro brand, at least. And even compared to very, you know, mainstream brands, um, this thing just kind of blows them out of the water, which micro brands tend to do. They, they, they specs wise, they tend to blow a lot of people out of the water that don't have to try as hard because you're just buying uh, a little bit of the name on there. You're paying for some of the advertising and whatnot. Um, so with that said, I know this is a long one, but there's and there's probably going to be more videos coming about this watch, comparing it to other watches and just talking about uh, the design, uh, you know, and further detail and depth. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a ton of people that are like, oh, man, this would have been everything I ever wanted if they would have just changed the the. <laughs> Christopher Ward logo or if it was just been a no, you know, ah, no date, you know, and all these things, you know, if you guys look quickly, boom, see how balanced and beautiful, uh, that is there with the smaller indices at the nine and the three because of the date, because of the name, it's just purposeful. It's, it's nice. So I'm digging that. Anyways, this has been a long one. Um, if you made it to the end, congratulations. <laughs> um, so if you liked the video, please do a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.